What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. Um, this week's, or today's model is uh, actually a sped up model showing you how I created my Christmas image for this year. So uh, I just kind of wanted to model a Christmas scene um, in SketchUp and I didn't want to get too in-depth with modeling a building or anything like that. I just wanted to uh, basically create a scene that I could model pretty quick and then um, come in here and kind of fill out with components and stuff like that. Um, in the past I've done models like this and then I just get so buried in the detail, you know, and I didn't want to do that on this one. So you know, I just kind of wanted to model a fireplace and then uh, come in here and model a mantle and then uh, just model the windows and stuff like that and then just use furniture and, and stuff out of the 3D warehouse in order to kind of fill the whole model out. So I started off by coming in here and modeling um, just, just my general room shape and then uh, I came in here and modeled a fireplace on the wall and I initially kind of went through the 3D warehouse to try to find something that fit there and uh, just couldn't really find anything that I like so I said that I just um, I'd, I just kind of decided that I'd model it myself and then bring in a component for the actual fireplace itself and then uh, what you're seeing now is just once again me kind of sitting here working on the windows um, and I do this all the time where I create the different window panes as components so that I only have to edit one of them um, and then this is me coming in here and just uh, flipping everything so that the white face is facing out instead of the dark face um, I always try to keep the um, I always try to keep the faces F or the front face is facing outward. So anyway, and then I, I like to give kind of a border around windows to give them a little bit of depth, just to give them a little bit of interest. And um, so now I came in here and I actually cut out a lot of the uh, looking for the right components that I wanted. And uh, so I go ahead and find a, I'm going to go ahead and find a Christmas tree and bring it in here. And actually I end up switching this out a little bit later. But that's the nice thing about components is you can just kind of go through and find the things that you like. And then if you decide you don't like the way they work later, you can come back in here and uh, get rid of them all. So, but there's all sorts of cool free stuff in the 3D warehouse that you can use to fill out your models so you don't have to model all this stuff yourself. So the nice thing was I didn't have to come in here and model these couches. I just pulled in the components and then I kind of place them and then uh, you can use the scale tool if the sizes aren't quite right and make them look the way that you want them to look. So anyway, it's just a real easy way to fill out a scene. So next thing I did is I came in here and I just kind of filled in the roof of my model. And um, so I had to come in here and draw a couple lines to fill that in. But once I had my roof, I could uh, come in here a little bit later and model some beams in here. Um, but first I came back in and looked for some more components. And then, like I said, I came in here and I kind of uh, brought in a fireplace grate that I liked and um, just kind of set that in the fireplace. And again, it's just real nice how a lot of that stuff already exists and you don't have to do a lot of work for it. Um, so next thing I did is I came in here and I found a wood floor. Actually, no, I didn't. Next thing I did was came in here and modeled a table. I actually went and looked for a table that I liked for a long time in the, uh, in the 3D warehouse and I didn't like it. So I just figured I'd come in here and just model it myself just real quick. Um, the table is kind of a, kind of an easy model to make in SketchUp. So I came in here and I modeled that. And then uh, I used components for the four legs so that I only had to create the legs once. Um, and again, I probably got a little too far into detail considering this kind of sat. This kind of just sits off on the side of your model. Side note, I'm going to be creating kind of a beginner tutorial teaching how to create this table. So be looking for that. So anyway, I came in here and I modeled this and a lot of the time it's just easier to model this upside down and then flip it over with the rotate tool and then set it on the ground just like that. So I got the table that I wanted and then you just come in here and just place a place a wood texture that you like on it. Um, and then uh, I came in here and found a component for the rug and again I looked for a long time finding stuff that I liked and um, you know, I like you guys too much to uh, leave that in because it was just me flipping through the 3D warehouse so I went ahead and cut that out but again it's just cool how much stuff there is in here you know there's a ton of different candles and all sorts of Christmas stuff that you can bring in and um, you know I could have modeled some of this stuff myself but again I was really trying to just kind of uh, to just kind of come in here and do a quick model. And the great thing is the 3D Warehouse just has so much free stuff available. So, 
So, and then I was just bringing in some stuff to kind of go up on the mantle, and I think this piece that I ended up bringing in is probably a little higher poly than maybe I would have wanted, because it kind of started slowing my model down. So what what I ended up doing is I ended up coming in here, and I tried to purge all the unused stuff, because sometimes when you bring stuff in from the 3D warehouse, um, there's just a lot of extra materials and junk like that that uh, come into the model that you don't really need. So I went in there and tried to purge that, and it was still kind of getting big. And so what I end up doing after I place all this stuff is I take all the high poly stuff, the stuff that I got in the 3D warehouse that was kind of slowing everything down, I end up putting it on its own layer. Um, and that's a great way... Um, that's a great way to come in here and uh, speed your model up while you're working on it. So you put all the high poly stuff on its own layer. But then I came in here and I started adding uh, textures to the fireplace. And I didn't like the built-in stone piece in SketchUp. But what you can do is there's a lot of stone companies that actually have textures in the 3D warehouse now. So you bring them in as... Uh, you bring them in as items in your model and when you do that all the textures come in as well and they show up as materials in your material piece so I just kind of use the uh, color picker to uh, pick a couple of these and then um, and then I came in here and I just resized them using the uh, material section of the tray until I got kind of the look that I wanted so it's just really cool that there's all this stuff in here that you can um, just download and use in your model real easy. But then what I did is I came in here and I added the wood texture to my mantle, but it was running the wrong direction. So I came in here and used the texture change tools to come in here and resize and rotate the texture so that it looked more, so that the grain kind of ran the right way and all of that. And... You know, again, I didn't use like super high resolution images or anything like that. I tried to use stuff that was in SketchUp as much as possible. But, um, I mean, you can get as detailed as you want. You can go find uh, different textures online and stuff like that. And actually, I ended up having to do that for the logs on the walls, um, which we'll get to a little bit later. But again, I just kind of came in here and I just detailed out uh, the trim around the window. And then I came in here and I modeled the beams. And the beams, I just uh, split this line into three pieces um, so that I had a couple points that I could draw beams off of. And then I just used the follow me tool to extrude these rectangles um, along that line. So I drew a rectangular face and then I just drew, then I just uh, used the follow me tool to extrude that and then I filled in the end. And then I make the beams a component and I just make a copy of that with the move tool um, just so I have these two beams over here. And, uh, you know, I mean, maybe I could have made these a little bigger or maybe not. But anyway, so then I came in here and, you know, a lot, a lot of this model was just looking for components in the 3D warehouse. Um, you know, I didn't want to come in here and spend a lot of time modeling presents and stuff like that. So I really tried to uh, stick with the whole get as much out of the 3D warehouse as possible thing. And, uh, you know, one thing I kind of wanted, wanted to do with this model is um, I was just modeling for one scene, for one image. So all I wanted was an image that showed the fireplace and the tree and all of that stuff. So the next thing I did, because this is kind of a log log space is I had to go look for a texture um, that was actually like a decent log texture and uh, I started off I think at sketchuptextures.com and went and looked through some of that and uh, didn't really like what I found and so I think I ended up I ended up at textures.com and textures.com will let you download some free stuff and uh, when, when you do this uh, you you can log in, you get a certain number of free downloads, but you need to make sure you select a texture that's seamless. And a seamless texture means something that's going to tile seamlessly. Um, and that means that when it repeats, everything kind of uh, matches up. And I came in here and I, I really wanted this to be a little bit lighter. And a lot of the time you can kind of lighten up the color and the texture. But in this case, it didn't really work. So I ended up just kind of sticking with what was in this. And uh, I did some flipping through looking for some other stuff. Um, I was trying to find a decent texture that could go up on the ceiling, but it didn't end up working. So I ended up 
see, I brought this texture in and I tried resizing it and all that. And I just didn't like the way that it looked. So I ended up just going with the same texture that I had on the walls. And uh, I liked the way it turned out. It was a little darker than I thought it was going to be. But, you know, I mean, sometimes you got to take what you can get when you're looking for textures. Um, I tried to lighten it up a little bit and that didn't quite work either. See, see how when I tried to lighten it up right there, I got a whole bunch of like discoloration. So sometimes that's just kind of the way that that works. Um, so I ended up just kind of going with it. And then I came back in and I ended up swapping out my tree. I didn't really like the way the tree was looking because it was just too dark. There weren't really, there wasn't really green in the branches. So I ended up bringing this tree in that's more made of 2D images than anything else. So it's just made of repeating versions of the same image, but um, I thought it looked great, and I just came in here and kind of resized it so that it looked looked right. And then, um, you know, once I did that, I just kind of applied a style to it to make it look a little bit more artistic. Um, you know, and there's a ton of different styles you can download and stuff like that, but I really kind of like the way that this looked. So... Anyway, that was just kind of a quick run through of uh, the way that I came in here and created my Christmas model. So hopefully you like the narration on this. I'm hoping you guys have a very Merry Christmas. And thank you so much for coming and watching my stuff. I really appreciate that. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a second and clicking that like button down below, um, that'd be great. That'd really help me out. Um, and I'm coming out with new SketchUp stuff every week. So if you want to click that subscribe button, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Finally, leave a comment below. Let me know if you like this format, if you like what I did in this video. Um, if you did anything cool for Christmas or just anything, I love to have a conversation with you guys and I'm just very grateful that you guys uh, take the time to watch my stuff. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this here, but thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a Merry Christmas and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.